if you say that, that the trust there is, is remaining or it may be dented, but it is actually still there. Is that trust, do you think, reflected in the media, which might take another view? I think, listen, we're we're in the media as well. And, you know, we're all obsessed with each other, frankly. Very uh, true. You know, so, you know, people in RTE are obsessed with people in RTE. The people outside of RTE are obsessed with people in RTE and, and themselves. So there's an element of that. We're also in competition with each other. Uh, but we made some terrible mistakes, so I'm not going to sit here and start blaming the media or start complaining about media coverage of us. We made some terrible mistakes, and whatever happened, we brought on ourselves. So you need to take that on the chin, you need to learn from it, and you need to move on from it. I do think that media in Ireland generally is a little bit obsessed with itself, with itself, and I think sometimes what, what, what interests us maybe isn't that, important in other parts of the country and I think that's something across the board that we all need to be aware of. When you mentioned there that you attended NIHE as it was then on the North East Corridor as well, um, DCU now um, you recently gave a lecture or some time ago gave a lecture there on public service broadcasting and I know the trust element was very central to that. What are the other aspects of public service broadcasting that you think are so important in terms of the service that you give to that public the the, the, the Joe Blogs out there who watches mm-hmm. television and listens to the radio? For me, Ireland, and I don't think people realise this, but Ireland is one of the most competitive media markets in the world. Um, We have the BBC, which has an income of €4 billion every year and is a fantastic broadcaster, possibly the best broadcaster in the world. We have ITV, we have Channel 4, we have Sky, that mammoth uh, media conglomerate. We have companies like UPC, which is a subsidiary of Liberty Global, the biggest uh, cable company in the world. And, you know, the broadcasters are all broadcasting in the main language of this country. And that's unusual. You know, overspill in other European countries, overspill from France into Germany or, or you know, it's not in, in the same language, so it doesn't have the same effect. So we are effectively competing with the BBC. And for me, what we need is a strong public service broadcaster that has a commitment to Irish programming, to Irish output, to Irish investment, to things that other broadcasters who don't get the license fee can't afford to do and can't do because that kind of programming is expensive. We can buy we can buy an American series for four grand, you know, four grand for a half hour and it'll do good ratings for us. If we invest in an Irish production, it'll cost us fifty, sixty grand an hour. Uh, so Irish production is more expensive. So what you need from me is you need a public service broadcaster that is committed to making that investment, to reflecting Irish lives, to informing Irish people, educating Irish people and entertaining Irish people. And we shouldn't forget that as well, because that's part of a public service remit as well. But you wouldn't for a moment believe you have a monopoly on public service broadcasting. No, because I, I know the people who run stations like this one, for example, would say we do a certain element of public service broadcasting I've, as well. I, I've, I've said this publicly since I came into the into the job and, you know, possibly an unusual thing for, for the Director General of RTE to say, but, but, but like I, we are not the only organisation in the country that does public service broadcasting. Uh, most certainly not. But for me, you need a properly funded national broadcaster. If you start splitting up the licence fee and doing one for a, a bit for everyone in the audience, then you weaken that national broadcaster, which I feel is is required now more than ever because the Irish market has become so competitive, because there are such huge media multinational organisations who, who are broadcasting in Ireland and taking advertising revenue out of Ireland. So for me, the need for, there's a greater need for RTE now than perhaps ever before. Noel, when you finish your seven year term as DG of RT, you're a very young man still. And, you. you know, you, you, you could obviously extend that contract. You would have that option. But what would you turn to if you decided not to continue in RT? What, where would you see yourself going? I, I, I wouldn't have thought about it too much. But I, I, you know, I think if you if you put a gun to my head, I'd, I would see myself working in business. Um. Uh, you know, in in the private sector, either either through I'm, I'm one of these people who constantly has ideas in terms of things that I'd like to do, either either through that or or, or working for another company. Um, I think that side of things interests me. Business interests me. Um, uh, uh, so I, I think that that's 
at this stage that's that that's where I would see myself going. Before we let you go, um, the highlight of your uh, career, probably or one of them, was when you produced the uh, Eurovision in 1997, and I believe you also met your wife, the singer Emer Quinn. Tell us about that. I was head of the Irish delegation, which was a very uh, lofty title in Oslo at the Eurovision. And uh, I earned that only by right of being the producer of Kenny Live and they, the, the producer automatically became the, the head of delegation. And as I say, a lofty title, but it was basically minding the artists and uh, dealing with the local uh, broadcaster. And uh, I met my wife, Emer Quinn, was representing Ireland uh, at Oslo. And uh, we met and uh, got married, I don't know, three, four years later so. I completely ruined her life with that trip. So uh, but, uh, so you met your wife and then the following year you got the, the honour of then producing the Eurovision yeah. because, because she won it. Yeah, so she, she gave you your big Well, gift. no, I wouldn't. I would definitely wouldn't credit her with that now. I was, uh, RTE gave me the honour of producing it, but uh, she gave us the excuse for, for giving me the honour. But uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, I, I was executive producer of, of uh, Eurovision uh, in 1997 in the point Carrie Crowley and Ronan Keating presented it. And that was a fantastic year. It was, it was great. Uh, it, being, being executive producer of the Eurovision was, was I wouldn't, and I wouldn't have been that interested in Eurovision. I would have been one of these people who watched the Irish act and then watched the results. But um, being executive producer of Eurovision was fantastic. It, it was just a fantastic fantastic opportunity and you get to pick the best people to work with the best director the best set designer the, the best lighting director uh, and uh, it was one it was a very difficult year because I was a very new producer uh, and I was very full on but it was a fantastic year you know it was, uh, w- one of those things that I'll always look back on as a highlight a wonderful experience Noel Curlin before we let you go we have to tell you that um, Seamus Farrelly one of our presenters here in RT or in LMFM should I say um, used to some years ago run a camera photography shop in RD and he says that one day you walked in and it asked him about a career in the media and he told you and no, don't go there. It won't amount to anything. Is this true? That is true. And uh, it, it was, I went in for a either a school picture or a graduation picture. And uh, I was all wide eyed and innocent and full of optimism. And Seamus says, uh, and I met him in, on the street in RD recently and we were laughing about it. Uh, and Seamus says, uh, what do you want to do, young man? And I said, I, I want to be a journalist. And he went, a journalist? What on earth would you want to be a journalist for? Journalism's a terrible profession. And he just came out with this litany of how awful journalism was. So he dented my aspirations a little, and uh, but uh, not too much. And it's interesting, he stayed in the media, even though he was trying to put everybody Warning else off. Yeah. Indeed. But as I say, I met him recently on the street and we were laughing about it. Indeed. Well, Noel Curran, Director General of RT, thank you so much for dropping into us here in LMFM. Thank you.